Hey oh, I don't know why my phone does this. It decides after 10 minutes and 48 seconds, very specifically, that it will cut the the foot the filming and then move it to a whole nother video file. And it kind of sucks because I want to continue talking and then it just cuts off what I say or show. All right, so uh, rant aside, train tunnel. I've never built one before. I'm really excited to build one. But it's going to be a lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's something that's been uh, on my mind for the better half of this year. That I've wanted to build one. That I know roughly where it's, you know, how it's going to lay out and things. But there's still a lot of pieces to work with. And there's still, uh, I, I like to do a lot of math. For better or for worse. Especially being, you know, if I'm going to use a train this long and has a nose stretching out like that. I'm going to be sure that it doesn't bonk into any structure. So, you know, the thing holds together and it'll move smoothly back and forth. <sighs> but the problem is, it makes it look like I don't have anything built. Even though I've been back and forth measuring areas for a long time. So, um, I will say though, one of the benefits is that I used out of the Horizon Express, which was actually a longer nose on the end of the passenger train. And that was more difficult to work around. So, even though I don't have that anymore now... Um, this is okay to work with. This the strain works fine for me. Um, so aside from the height and aside from offshoot of the track, um, I also have to work on how much inward it's going to the city and how much upward it's going to sustain. Because it's not just going to be topping off right over the tr right over the uh, the train itself. It's planned that this would be layer one, and then there'll be a layer two on top of it. And then layer three on top of that, or roughly the same height in between them. Layer two is going to be the top of the train tunnel, more mountainy area where you can do some hiking stuff, campgrounds, fishing, you know, outdoor activities. And that's something I've wanted to do for a very long time with Sudside Heights and other previous Lego towns I've built because I just think it's a fun extra activity to incorporate. It's something that separates from other areas. It's like the beach aspect. Um, is not everyday Lego town function. It's sometimes incorporated, but mine is more emphasizing that. So there would be kind of the same thing over there. Um, and then layer three is just basically building it upward. Because my motto for a long time with Studside Heights has been, I can't, <laughs> I can only work in a certain amount of width, of footprint, you know, perimeter and everything like that. And now it's been reduced since I moved, so I have a lot less that I can maneuver things. So if I can't build outward, you know, length and width, then I got to build upward. So height. And that's why, you know, I'm trying to work on that with some of the buildings or just that whole mountain tunnel area. So that way it's still useful area instead of it just being open flat land i can't really build houses or anything on top of it unless i put it up a little bit further and now i can put a log cabin with a lake or something not a huge lake i mean just some body of water whatever the case may be <laughs> now with that whole area it's basically taking this row of base plates so it's not stretching that much further out into the city that way uh, except for a few rock details in the entrance to the tunnel. But the the base plates will actually... I have other base plates like these. I'm going to be stacking on top of this. So that way, if I need to move stuff or reach my hand in here and finagle things, if it needs to be fixed or whatever, I can do that. And also adjust them or just recustomize them or something. Um, so with that being said... I need to make this framework really sturdy so it can support that weight. Whatever weight is going to be on top of it, just being on those base plates because it's not going to physically attach onto them. They're just resting on them. So, with that being said, that's why it's taking a lot of time to get to this. But now they got the train tunnel, or now they got the train track done, I can work around that without the train track adjusting. And the train tunnel can now, you know, get moving. So roughly around this area is where I was considering opening the entrance to the train tunnel on either side. It may push back a bit, depending on the parts, but I think this is okay for now. And hopefully it will work okay as far as like 
the nose goes for the the train because you know it curves in like that and it's like okay pretty much clear so uh yeah um there will also be an opening right here which will allow me to use the speed regulator adjust electrical things with it if need be because uh, this is again 20 30 year old technology i'm glad it still works but it could always fritz you know if if wires fray a bit so um if i need to make adjustments i can do that and this kind of area in between them is going to be blocked so you won't actually see it completely or well, I guess I could do this, but it would kind of break the immersion of having a train tunnel into a into mountainside on that way. Um, I could make it entirely clear. That would be fun. But, again, you wouldn't really get the sense of it being part of the, the rest of the, set, the setup like that. I mean, you'll see it go in through here. It'll just get blocked for a bit. And then you'll see a little bit of it through here as it's passing through. Because, like I said, it's going to be... There's going to be enough cut out that I can reach this thing and adjust it as need be. Um, so, there's kind of visualizing that, if I, if I may, I try to describe how that would look. Um, it's going to be a little more blocked off there because I don't need anything open on that side. Um, it is evenly spaced on both sides of the base plates. So this is four, four studs off of the, the railroad track. That's four studs off of the railroad track. And over here, a little more than four studs, but that's fine. Because it needs that for those uh, connection points for the 9 volt uh, regulator to run. I'm collecting uh, as many light gray, dark gray, even in light bluish or dark bluish. Um, brown, tan, and black bricks that I can find, especially basic bricks, to build this thing up, because it's going to take a bunch of them. And I've never built something like this before, so I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of trial and error, and <laughs> and I want to make sure that it works. I, I don't normally build landforms like that. I've, I've built Montu P2 in LEGO, but that was only on a 48x48 48 48 base plate, and it wasn't too, too tall. And there were a lot of cheating bricks in between. Like, Duplo was used as a support underneath it, so it wasn't entirely made out of brown bricks or whatever. Uh, there was some green bricks used in there as well for the outside layer. So, yeah. Um, and then there was a Simpsons clone creation that I made a couple years ago. I forget the entire name of it. But that was only built a little bit higher than one of these kinds of mountain pieces and several base plates long, just to create a chasm at the end of it. Because that was the main point of it, having the chasm there. Um, but everything else had to be leveled off, so it just it felt more natural that way. <sighs> so there's going to be a lot more to go into. I've been looking through a couple of videos here and there on train tunnels and mountain building, uh, just to get some sense of it. I think what I've come to, since mine's on the shorter end of it, I just need to work on the frame, and then work on the actual look of the mountain later. Because I can always put pieces sideways to make that mountainous look a-okay. I mean, I can use these for days. I'd, I'm going to be okay with that. But um, there are also ways of putting pieces, especially like the slanted pieces, sideways on the ends of a structure. So it just has the mountain look to it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta do that. Um, while still keeping it really firm all throughout. So it might actually look a bit squarish on the interior just to get that support, just to be able to hold the layers that's going to go on top of this thing. I'm hoping at best that layer three will have a lighthouse on top of it because that would just help with the, the shore town theming of it and also being at the highest point because it's where lighthouses generally need to be so it can, you know, shine the light furthest um, above everything. And it wouldn't be a big deal of it being so inland because that's how real lighthouses are sometimes. I know ones in New Jersey that are like that, like the twin lights. Um, a couple of them in Sandy Hook, actually. I don't try to put realism into everything, but I do like using real life as inspiration, if that makes sense. Like, I don't need this to be 100% authentic or realistic to something, or logistic every which way. But I, I do like trying to use real life things and say, oh yeah, I could do it like that, it'll, it'll look good. So... I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. I don't know when the next update will be, but 
at least I got to share this with you, and uh, if you got any tips, I'm welcome to them. I know I built a lot of amusement park stuff. I would love to use those, but I don't know if there's going to be room for an amusement park or even a boardwalk. Um, that's going to take a little while to figure out. So thank you for watching this video and the second one beforehand. Um, hope you all have a wonderful day, have a happy holidays, and I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully we'll have a not too, too long before the next update.